This afternoon, we're flying on board one of Virgin Australia's newest aircraft. Their 737 MAX 8 is used for their Keynes Tokyo Haneda line, a route which was launched about nine months ago. It's my first time flying a narrow body across Pacific. These newer single IO aircraft are becoming increasingly popular for transoceanic and long haul flights, so we'll see how Virgin Australia fares. And of course, we'll dig into their in-flight menu and cross the equator. Sit back, grab some Pringles or kangaroo jerky, and let's head to Tokyo. Good morning and welcome back once again to Keynes Australia. The weather is certainly a lot much better than it was exactly one week ago today. I just landed here about 30 minutes ago from my flight from Brisbane and today I'm going to bring you along on what I believe is Virgin Australia's longest flight. We'll be enjoying Virgin Australia's international service on their Keynes to Tokyo Haneda route on board their one and only Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft. And of course this aircraft has been in the news more than plenty over the last little bit. So I'll give you my take on it and explain why I have no issues whatsoever flying on this aircraft. Uh, the flight is set to depart at 3.15, so come along and let's enjoy a lovely day as we go from A to B. Our day started a few hours earlier checking in in Brisbane. The kiosk was unable to facilitate the check-in for the international itinerary, so the staff at the counter took care of all the paperwork. The staff member was on top of her game and provided one of the best check-in experiences I ever had. Friendly, knowledgeable, professional, and efficient. Fantastic start to the day. It was then off the canes while enjoying some of the best views in the world with my morning coffee. Arriving with a three hour layover, I didn't have quite enough time to head into town like I did two videos prior, though I certainly would have loved to given the gorgeous weather. At least there was some time to enjoy the flowers and plants which I've never seen before. Terminal 1 handles international flights to a handful of regional destinations and East Asia. And one thing I love about traveling to new destinations is learning about the airlines. Until this day, I had no idea about Air New Guinea, the national carrier of Papua New Guinea. Street side of the terminal had recently been renovated, now having a fresh, modern appearance, and I found myself being only one of a few people in the departures hall. With all the formalities done in Brisbane, it was a matter of heading upstairs and through security and passport control. Gateside is set up with a central waiting area with a convenience store, cafe, and a few other small shops. It's not too big as you would imagine seeing that the airport is facilitating just over half a dozen departures per day. I managed to set my eyes on another new airline, PNG Air. Ever heard of them? They also fly to Papua New Guinea and I thought their livery was pretty cool. Today we're departing from gate 6 and here's our 737 MAX 8, the exact same aircraft I flew on one week ago. And beside is the slightly larger Jetstar Dreamliner which was off to Osaka Kansai, uh, yet to fly on them for an international route. If there was one snag of the day, it was the boarding process. Uh, the gate is rather far from that central area and away from the Wi-Fi, air conditioning and seating and so forth. We were queued for about 20 minutes before things eventually started to move. Today we'll be seated in 8F near the front of the plane. This afternoon we're on Virgin Australia's only 737 MAX 8 aircraft, which joined their fleet in September 2023, making this one of the newest aircraft i ever been on. Their seating configuration is identical to their 737-800 aircraft composing of 176 seats over two classes with three lavatories on board. The economy cabin is further separated into economy X, preferred seating and economy. It's just over seven hours to reach Tokyo on this almost direct northern route. The cabin is laid out in the standard 3-3 seating layout, with Boeing Sky Interior LED lighting and purple appear to be the color of choice for our flight. 
Although there are two classes of service, there is no partition, curtain, or bulkhead separating business from economy. I was seated in 8F and noticed that 9A lacked a window, so avoid this seat if you want to enjoy the views, which you do because you're flying between two very cool countries, Australia and Japan. The new dark grey seats with the red headrest are slimmer than compared to Virgin's regular 737 aircraft and were fairly comfortable, enough for me to sleep on my inbound flight the week earlier. The seat reclines a few inches to add to the comfort. The headrest is nicely padded and easily adjustable. I thought the seat back was made well for long haul flights on a low cost airline. At the top is a literature pocket which contains a safety card and menu. It's nice to see a device mount and USB charging port close by. On the side of the seat is a coat hook. Below is the table and the pocket. Virgin Australia advertises a seat pitch of 31 inches and I felt the seats to be reasonably roomy. One bonus of these newer model of seats is their slim design, which yields more room for the guests. If there is one critique, it's the decision of not providing a regular power outlet, as this is a handy piece of hardware for long haul travel. But above you have access to the reading light and air control. Overall, I was pleased with the seat and space provided. After coming off a traditional 737 a few hours earlier, it was very easy to compare the two cabins, and I find this cabin more refined, spacious, and enjoyable. Virgin Australia's 737 MAX doesn't have Wi-Fi or it hasn't been activated yet, as connection was only available for the onboard streaming IFE, which we'll explore in a few moments. And as there is no moving map, I did find out this day that Google Maps does a decent job of keeping track even all the way up here. If you know how Google Maps can manage this, uh, leave a comment and let us know. And as always, I take the moment to welcome new viewers to the channel. If you went down some YouTube rabbit hole and ended up in this little corner, welcome. Regardless of how you got here, I invite you to subscribe for continued aviation and travel related content. One thing I felt Virgin Australia excelled in was their onboard service. Shortly after takeoff, water was distributed to the guests before the first of two meal services. The menu of course has been designed specifically for this route with the added Japanese and contains pretty much the same items as their regular menu with one added addition. And what's that addition? Well, stay tuned to find out. As this flight is over four hours, the hot meal option was also available, which would end up being dinner. Tea, water, and coffee, which is instant rather than brewed, is complimentary. Although there are two services, it is common to purchase items or grab a cup of coffee throughout the flight, and the crew did a great job at meeting the needs of the passengers. I picked up some Pringles at the grocery store the day prior, and some kangaroo jerky at one of the airport shops. So for this first round, I went with the Balter XPA once again as I really enjoyed it the first time. So cheers to heading back to Japan and winter. It was like 11 degrees when we landed, so a bit more chilly than Keynes.
The in-flight entertainment this Jing-2 device is. The interface is different compared to their domestic aircraft. They don't have the largest selection as compared to a legacy carrier, but the library is fairly sizable with a decent range of content. One drawback I found with the system is a lack of a moving map. At around 5.30 p.m., the second meal service began. I was on the fence about getting something, but I thought I'd give the $15 hot meal a try. You have to ask what items are on offer when the C8 comes by, and today was a cheese ravioli dish and something else I can't recall. They heat it to order, so it takes a few minutes before the tray arrives, and it was pretty hot. At first glance, it doesn't look terribly appetizing, does it? The raviolis themselves were quite bland, with a simple potato filling. The cheese sauce with some added pepper wasn't too bad, but for 15 bucks, maybe that's a bit of a stretch. I would probably go for a chicken wrap or one of those snack sets instead next time. And here's a look at the rear lavatory. It was kept clean throughout the flight. The Max aircraft have these smaller sinks and lacks a vanity and countertop, so it's not the best for long haul flights where you want to change clothes, brush your teeth and so forth, so you kind of end up juggling it all. Now as we reach Tokyo, the question remains, are the 737 MAX aircraft safe? And I believe they are, as well I'm on one right now. I am in no way an engineer or work in the aviation industry, so there has to be some trust with the regulatory bodies of various jurisdictions. The MAX 8 has been recertified independently by the FAA, Transport Canada and many other regulatory organizations. The aircraft has been under the microscope, so I'm confident that these aircraft are perfectly safe to fly. And remember, you may be on this aircraft once or maybe a few times a year, while there are countless people in the industry who work on this aircraft every day without incident. Unfortunately, mainstream media tends to go overboard wanting to make the news rather than reporting on it, so they run with any Boeing story they can find. Anyway, back to the flight. Well, this was actually a very smooth trip up to Tokyo. The seat was comfortable and the crew did an outstanding job. It does appear that the VA is targeting the leisure market. There is a small two row business class, but if you are looking for the lounge, Keynes doesn't have one, a lie flat or more relaxed seat with a power outlet and Wi-Fi and a delicious menu, you're probably going to want to search for an alternative option. But if you are looking for a more relaxed trip, a bit more price conscious and have time for a layover in Keynes, then Virgin Australia is someone to consider. I booked an open jaw ticket from Tokyo which arrived in Sydney and returned from Brisbane with the connection in Keynes. International open jaw or multi-city itineraries cannot be booked online but can be done so by calling their booking center. The price for this itinerary came out to 117,740 yen. And as a reminder, that Virgin Australia is not part of any airline alliance, but does partner with many airlines such as Air Canada, United, ANA, and so on. So you may be able to earn points between partner airlines. Anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought about Virgin Australia's longest flight and their 737 MAX. And I'll catch you in the next video.